Good day. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and in this topic we are going to describe the absolute value of a complex number. In this topic we will define the absolute value of a complex number, and we will consider a few of those properties. We will prove these properties, or theorems, rigorously. For a real number x, this notation represents the absolute value or magnitude of that value. Some properties of the absolute value include the absolute value is greater than or equal to zero, and the absolute value of x is equal to zero if and only if x is equal to zero. Also, the absolute value of a product is the product of the absolute values. Is there an absolute value of a complex number? Well, let's consider again the geometric interpretation of a complex number. Here we see the point z is equal to alpha plus beta j. Given this interpretation, it's natural to use as the absolute value the distance of z to 0. For example, if z is equal to alpha plus beta j, then the absolute value of z is the square root of alpha squared plus beta squared, or the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. Again, it's very important to remember that the imaginary part of z is the real number beta and not beta j. For example, if z1 is 3 plus 4j, then the absolute value of z1 is 5. If z2 is negative 2.4 minus 0.7j, then after doing the arithmetic, we see that the absolute value of z2 is 2.5. If we consider any real value of theta and define z3 is equal to cos of theta plus sine of theta times j, then the absolute value of z3 works out to be exactly equal to 1. Finally, for this number, we see that the absolute value is approximately 0.5. 1944 and change. Notice that because this is a numeric approximation, it's not an exact value, we use approximately equal to. Now, theorem. If z is a complex number that is also real, then the absolute value of z is the absolute value of the real component. That is, the absolute value of the complex number is equal to the real number equal to the real component. Proof. If z is real, then the imaginary part of z is 0. Therefore, z is equal to alpha plus 0 times j, where the real part of z is equal to alpha. Thus, the absolute value of z must be the square root of alpha squared plus 0 squared, which is just the square root of alpha squared, which is by definition for a real number the absolute value of alpha. But the absolute value of alpha is the absolute value of the real component of z, and so we are finished. Next, a theorem. For any complex number z, the absolute value of z is greater than or equal to zero. To prove this, we need a new concept. Well, it's actually not a new concept. It's something you already intuitively understand from secondary school, but we're going to give it a name. A function f is strictly monotonic increasing if f at x is less than f at y whenever x is less than y. Now, here are some examples. The square root of x is strictly monotonically increasing for x greater than or equal to 0. 1 is less than 3. The square root of 1 is less than the square root of 3. Ln of x is also strictly increasing for x greater than 0. 1 is less than 4, ln of 1 is less than ln of 4. e to the x is also strictly, in monic strictly monotonic increasing for all real x. Negative 3 is less than 2, e to the negative 3 is less than e to the 2. x squared is monotonically increasing, but only for x greater than 0. So 1 is less than 3, 1 squared is less than 3 squared or 9. Finally, x cubed 
is an example of a function that is also monotonically increasing for all real values of x. Thus, getting back to our theorem, if z is equal to alpha plus beta j, then alpha and beta must be real. Thus, alpha squared is greater than or equal to zero, and beta squared is greater than or equal to zero. But if we have two inequalities, we can add both sides, and thus alpha squared plus beta squared is greater than or equal to zero. However, the square root function is strictly monotonically increasing, so the absolute value of z, which is the square root of the left-hand side, is greater than or equal to the square root of the right-hand side, which is zero. Now here's another theorem. The absolute value of z is equal to zero if and only if z is equal to zero. Now how do we prove such a statement? Essentially we have a statement that says p is true if and only if q is true, where p and q are two separate statements. There are four ways of proving such a statement. I can show that if p is assumed to be true, then q must be true, and then I'll assume that q is true and then show that p must also be true. I can assume that p is true and show that q must be true, and then assume that p is false and show that q must also be false. It's insufficient to show only one of these. Alternatively, here's another formulation, or I can prove the other way. Assume p q is true and false, and show that p is respectively also true and false. Thus, to prove this theorem, we will start by assuming that z is 0, or 0 plus 0j. In this case, it's easy to show that the absolute value of z is equal to 0. Let's assume that z is not equal to 0. In that case, z is equal to alpha plus beta j, where either alpha is not equal to zero, or beta is not equal to zero, or both. If alpha is not equal to zero, then alpha squared must be greater than zero. Alternatively, if beta is not equal to zero, beta squared must be greater than zero. So in the first case, where alpha is not equal to zero, then beta squared is greater than or equal to zero, we can add alpha squared to both sides, and yet alpha squared is greater than zero, therefore alpha squared plus beta squared is greater than zero. In the second case, where beta is not equal to zero, beta squared must be greater than zero, therefore we can add beta squared to both sides of alpha squared greater than or equal to zero, and because beta squared is greater than zero, alpha squared plus beta squared must also be greater than zero. In either case, we have that alpha squared plus beta squared is greater than zero. The square root function is strictly monotonic increasing. Therefore, the absolute value of z is equal to the square root of the left-hand side, which is greater than the square root of the right-hand side, which is equal to zero. Thus, we've demonstrated the alternative. To this point, we have already shown that if gamma is real and z is equal to alpha plus beta j, then we have defined gamma times z. Now, just to quickly recap, remember that if z is equal to alpha plus beta j, it's actually equal to alpha plus beta times the square root of negative one. Thus, if gamma is any real number, then we are simply distributing the product gamma times alpha plus beta j across the sum, which gives us a result. So what is the absolute value of gamma z, and is that equal to the absolute value of gamma times the absolute value of z? Thus, let's show this theorem. Well, the absolute value of gamma times z is equal to the absolute value of the complex number on the right-hand side. That, by definition, is the square root of the sum of the squares of the real and imaginary components. 
I can expand that out and then factor out a gamma squared. But remember that the square root of x times y is equal to the square root of x times the square root of y when x is greater than or equal to 0. In this case, gamma squared is greater than or equal to 0. Therefore, this equals the square root of gamma squared times the square root of alpha squared plus beta squared. But the first term is the absolute value of gamma. The second term is the absolute value of z. Thus, we are finished. A few examples. If z is equal to 3 plus 4j, then the absolute value of z is equal to 5. Then negative 3 times z is equal to negative 9 minus 12j. We see that the absolute value of negative 3 times the absolute value of z is equal to 15. And if we calculate the other absolute value, we see that that too is equal to 15. If we define w to be 0 0.8 plus 1.5 times j, then the absolute value of w is equal to 1.7. 2.5w is therefore 2 plus 3.75j. 2.5 times the absolute value of w is 4.25. If, however, we calculate the absolute value of 2 plus 3.75j, we see with a little bit of arithmetic that this 2 is equal to 4.25. So in this topic, we've introduced the absolute value of a complex number. It's essentially the distance to the zero. We've defined functions that are strictly monotonically increasing, and we've seen that the absolute value of, of any complex number z is greater than or equal to zero. The absolute value of z is equal to zero if and only if z is equal to zero. And if we multiply z by a real number, then the absolute value of gamma times z is equal to the product of the absolute values. Reminder, in this lecture, we've seen a number of proofs, and we will continue to see other proofs throughout this course. These proofs are just a taste as to how we will be rigorously proving subsequent theorems throughout this course. Here are some references, acknowledgements, a colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers!